my spouse is out of control and my kids are at risk, I need a court order, how does it work? Hi, I'm Bill Farias, founder of Farias Family Law, and we got this question uh, just at the end of last week, a few days ago, and it's very common, it's a very common question for people dealing with a significant other who either has serious mental health issues or serious substance abuse issues. Those are the two categories that are most common for these types of circumstances. And what we're gonna talk about is if you're in this situation where you have this other person around and the kids are at risk, what do you do? You need to make sure the kids are safe. You need to make sure you're safe. The way that this works is, first of all, if there is an immediate threat, so if this person is either harming you or harming the kids, or there is a substantial likelihood of serious physical harm, either the person is threatening to do something or has a history of behaving in a violent manner, or there are other circumstances that put you in fear that you'll be harmed soon, then you have to consider just getting a restraining order, right? Um, you can call the police, you can go to the courts, and this is an easy call where it's absolutely clear that there is serious risk. If you're in a little bit of a gray area and you're not sure, you may want to run it by an attorney uh, because you don't wanna be running to court with orders in which there's no factual basis. And look, I do understand um, it's very difficult to make these judgment calls when you're in the heat of it, but there have been plenty of cases where people think they have enough for a restraining order and they really don't. And it was good that they reached out to us because they were gonna waste court time um, and sort of hurt their credibility. So you wanna err on the side of caution. If there is a real risk, you wanna make sure you protect yourself, protect your kids, get a restraining order, call the police, go to the court immediately and deal with it that way. If you're a little less certain, you can talk to an attorney. Now, another way um, to deal with this or a way to supplement this is a filing in the probate and family court. And these are called emergency filings and they are what they suggest. Basically, um, if you have a law firm helping you or if you're doing it yourself, what you're doing is you're filing uh, a complaint if there isn't already a case in the court system. You have to file a complaint if you're getting divorced uh, for a divorce. If there is a custody case and you're in a relationship, um, you might need to file a petition or a complaint for paternity or a complaint for custody support and parenting time, but you need a lead complaint to get the case into the court system. And then you're also filing an emergency motion to get in front of a judge quickly. Now, similar to what I explained uh, in terms of cases that are in a gray area, um, in terms of risk, same applies here. You don't want to rush into court with an emergency petition on a case that really isn't an emergency. So if you can, if you have the time and there is an immediate risk, you wanna run this by an attorney before you make a mistake and you open up a Pandora's box and you get yourself into a mess in family court. Run it by a lawyer, have a lawyer size it up for you and help you decide what the best next steps are. If the decision is that an emergency motion is proper and the best route, then you're filing the complaint if there isn't already a case filed, the motion asking the court for an emergency hearing, and you have to do this because a regular course hearing can be weeks out. And so if you have a true emergency and you need to protect yourself or you need to protect the children, then you want to file an emergency motion. And most of the time, what these motions request is that the other, per the other party, the other parent vacate the home. So you have an affidavit detailing all of the facts that support your position. You're filing this, hopefully getting a hearing date within a few days. Um, and then there's the actual hearing where the other person is present, the judge hears both sides, and ultimately 
the judge makes a decision on what to do going forward. So one of the issues is to vacate the home. Sometimes it involves um, an order for drug screening. Sometimes it involves an order for supervised parenting time, depending on the circumstances. But number one, you're looking at whether a restraining order is appropriate. And again, if you're truly at risk, you wanna err on the side of caution. And then number two, you're talking to an attorney about whether it makes sense to file an emergency motion with the courts to get an order in place to protect the children and to protect yourself if you need it. If you have any other questions about this, you can call us 508-675-0464. You can email us at info at fariousfamilylaw.com. If you found this video helpful, you can like it, subscribe to our channel, share it with anyone you think might benefit from it, and you can also find us on social at Farious Family Law. Thank you. Have a good day.